Yeah, probably if you, uh, as I said, my experience crosses from HR into payroll as well. So I've been involved in quite a few payroll integrations okay, um, and implementations. And what we find quite often on, on the payroll side is um, there's... They, they might, their current system might push a lot of data to the payroll system as well. And when we, uh, as for vision, because we've got quite a lot of experience in the world of payroll implementations or integrations as well, what mm-hmm. we find challenging is, is when we normally start asking clients then, why are you sending 16 fields of data to a payroll system when you actually only need four or five. Um, And those challenges, having clients then normally push back because they don't understand, no, but we needed it before. So we integrated that data before. Why are you not wanting to integrate all this data? So that's, and on the HR side as well, we often find the legacy systems have uh probably unique fields or, or, or they added uh customized their previous system for to accommodate certain things and within that system restraint they they couldn't get the perfect solution so but because they've been using their legacy systems normally for a while they expect the new system to replicate those things so it's, Again, it's always that yeah. that challenge and to, to know when and how to ask those good questions that always why. Uh, yeah. Give me a business justification why this needs to be this way. Um, and normally, as again, as I said, as a good consultant, you should know your area. So we know what is, is, is required data in the HR world and in the payroll world, and especially across different legislations. There, there's a lot of restriction now if we talk GDPR or in Africa, there's POPIA, in, in the US, there's Sarbanes-Oxley. So there's a lot of restriction on, on privacy of data. Um, and we as specialists in our field understand or are, f- are on familiar with those restrictions. So we will always challenge on a new implementation to the best of the client's uh, in the best interest of the client is when yeah. I challenge you, why are you taking that? It's not because I'm too lazy to 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 do what needs to be, but it's normally we, with our experience, know you could potentially have challenges in the future if you take this whole bunch of data and push it to another system. Um, and if it's not required, you are making life more difficult than it needs to be. So, yeah. but but clients are quite often hesitant to 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 let go because they used to no but i had it before i wanted to get so that's that's always the the give and take and and the political as like i said the political game you need to play but as a good consultant again you need to just you don't just ask but why because i think it's stupid that's not how you approach a client you need to explain to them the 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 intricacies of what they are trying to do and where it could negatively impact them. And normally then they understand and, and appreciate that. I find that if, if, if you explain to clients properly what, what the negative Im- implications could be, they are very receptive and appreciative of that. So they understand that and get trust in you. You do have their best interest at heart and ultimately that is what we're trying to achieve to give give them the best solution most secure most robust and obviously scalable so yeah. so that you can grow with your system so that you don't repeat this painful process that you are going through at the moment of <laughs> implementing a new system in two years time because this new system that that we implemented again fell falls short of giving you the best solution so you want to throw it out the window again 